Okay, Proverbs chapter 15. Okay, we're in the Proverbs where we look at our life, yay or nay. Are we doing well or are we not doing well? And we've got 33 verses in this chapter, and we're not going to be able to do 33 in the time. So we're going to divide the chapter in half and study as much as we can. Rather have whole than nothing at all. Verse 15, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. 1 Samuel 25. And 1 Samuel 25 would have been in the story of Solomon of his death. 1 Samuel 25, 25, Abigail. David's furious at her husband Nabal. In 1 Samuel 25, 25, let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Therefore, my Lord. And then she goes about pleading for mercy and grace from David because of her wicked husband. And her soft answer turns away a, a slaughter. Because that afternoon, Abigail would have been killed. She ends up to be David's wife. The servants that came fearfully to Abigail, uh, Abigail, David's servants are coming. And let me tell you, just because you know your husband is rude and cruel, David's men were good to us. And if nothing happens, we're dead, we're dead men. Grievous words stir up strife. Anger words. Terrible words. And sometimes grievous words are the gospel. And they stir up anger. Now, the gospel, I didn't say the gospel is grievous words, but to many who are unsaved, when you preach the gospel, it becomes grievous words. And it causes them to get angry. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of the fools poureth out foolishness. So what's the contrast? Wise and foolish, or fool. The tongue of the wise and the mouth of the fools. The wise has a knowledge aright, and fool, foolishness. Again, <clears throat> As a public minister that I am, I've had many countless people from Connecticut to Florida come up to me and they just start talking and it's like, full. Everything they say, full. And I'll say, hey, you got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Oh, I, I, Everything you said did not lead to the conclusion you were saved. You just spoke idiotically. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Uh-oh, I thought it was Santa Claus. He sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're awake. And even though you've been bad, you'll forever get that bite. You know what amazes me as bad as a little boy I was, that whether my mom knew or my dad knew or did not know, I still got plenty of gifts at Christmas time under Santa Claus. I guess Santa Claus didn't see the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Santa Claus is not all knowing. Santa Claus is not om om omniscient like God is. God is all-knowing. Knowest the evil is before the good because we're prone to do more evil than we are to do good. And God sees both of it. But if we dress God up in a little red and white outfit and make him so nice and he'll be at every malls and pat your little head. You see, Santa Claus never got mad. Santa Claus doesn't have wrath. Santa Claus didn't make hell. Santa Claus will not make your works wood, hair, stubble, and burn them up. 
And then again, Santa Claus is nobody. We did a complete report on that one. See our studies, our family line. Family. A wholesome tongue, good, it's good for you, is a tree of light. But perverseness therein is a breach of spirit. We got wholesome, which is good for you. And we got perverseness, which is not good for you. We got a tree of light. Look at chapter 3, verse 8. This is a quite mentioned in the Proverbs. Proverbs 3, 8. Let me check. Error. My first one is. Oh. That's a scribal error. I made a boo boo. I do do them. 318. I put the one. Proverbs 3.18. She's a tree of life, talking about wisdom, to them that laid hold upon her. It's talking about wisdom. So we got wisdom. 11 verse 30. Hopefully I got right this one right. I'm not perfect. You know, some people say you rant and rave on Facebook. Yeah. Hey, so do many of the saints in the Bible. Moses had it out with God. Elijah had it out with God. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that wins his souls is wise. And chapter 13, verse 12. We did this the other night. 13, 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire the when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. It's wisdom. It's a desire accomplished. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But the perverseness, a breach is a hole in a wall. In the spirit, man's spirit, not the Holy Spirit. I wet my tongue. Ugh, been sick. That's not good. A fool despises his father's instruction. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Now, we've read throughout the Proverbs that Solomon wrote, my son. And we've taken that to be Solomon writing to his son, Rehoboam. And what about God talking to his children? What about a fool despises God? What about God the Father's instruction? The fool has said in his heart that there's no God. So when somebody rejects the gospel, somebody rejects the Bible, saved or lost. I don't care what kind of letters they have before or after their name. They're a fool. When they have a modern Bible, they are a fool. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent, means strong to the matters of life. He will take correction. He will take words that, hey, that, that's not right. The house of the righteous is much treasure. But the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Wait to the day the Lord calls reckoning. I've got much, hopefully treasure. I wouldn't say much. Which is not here on this planet Earth. I hopefully that will have gold, silver, and precious stones in treasures in heaven. Jesus said that's where you put your treasures. 
and the revenues of the wicked, the, the income of the wicked on this, there's just trouble. They don't report all they're supposed to. They underpay people. They cheat. They lie. They steal. And then when they face judgment, they're not going to be able to open up their wall and say, God, how much do I buy you off with? And trouble, you, 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 can, you can get. You know, stock market, up and down, up and down. What, what happens if it keeps going down? It did when the stock market crashed. What are you going to do if you take if you got your money and someone steals it? We've got wildfires out in the west of the United States. I wonder how much money is burnt up in that mess. Who people who ran out quickly or who couldn't get to their goods. Now their property is gone and do they have enough to cover it? Yeah, Jesus said, set thy, set thy treasures in heaven where thief can't get it, where moth can't destroy it. Only thing I could destroy that treasure is my work against God and Jesus Christ. The lips of the wise disperse, disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish does not so. So everything we find foolish, and we've done a complete study of the fool, you can find that on our Hayward family website, pages and pages of foolish. I found myself to be a fool. And you know what? The Bible says you have no knowledge. The atheist has no knowledge. Disperse. I don't care if, if he's a nuclear scientist again. Great men of a great authority written in the great textbooks of the education system, both public and private, if they do not have the wisdom of God, the instruction of God, the wisdom of God, and the understanding of God, they are a fool, and all their work is of no credibility to God. A fool can get up and lecture before a classroom and say nothing. And a humble servant of God can get up and preach before people and tell them the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the holy, the knowledge of where their life is going to go. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. We got wicked. In the opposition, we got the upright. The upright praise God is delighted. The religious or sacrifice of the wicked. What is a sacrifice? It's giving up something. In the Old Testament would be animals, the tithe. But let's bring that to the church age, the sacrifice of the wicked. Okay? I'm going to say it. You're not going to like it. And I don't care. Bring them to church. Okay? They come to church. They have not repented. They have not gotten right with God. They have not confessed their sin. They're going to step out of the church service when church end and they're going to go right back into their sins they have no regard to what the bible says they have no regard to to jesus christ and they have no regard to their life whether they're lost or they're christians but they were told to put the tithe into play because god demanded out of malachi chapter 4 tithe to the church and that man who's re, who is re, who is wicked i'm saying with a straight face that that man was wicked Un unsaved sinner if that man is a christian and lives ungodly he can put whatever he wants into that plate god says 
It's an abomination. His sacrifice and putting his money in that plate is an abomination. You know what's also equal to abomination in the Bible? Sodomy and sexual perversion. Oh, the gay people. Oh, the, 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 the sodomites. Oh, the homosexuals. Oh, the lesbian. Oh, that wicked man that puts money in your plate in the church. Especially when God, when Pete, Paul says that God loves a cheerful giver. That guy don't want to put the money in the plate, but he's forced to put that money in the plate because you preach a message about putting money in the plate. If he doesn't want to give it cheerfully, like Paul said, it's also in the law of cheerful giving. God says that's sacrifice. That man goes knocking on doors. I am not against knocking on doors, but he goes knocking on doors because the pastor makes him to do it. Or the church makes him to do it. Or he does anything in the church service because they make him to do it. He don't give cheerfully and he is not living right. Or he could even be unsaved. Imagine an unsaved deacon in a church. God says everything that he does is an abomination. And I think I'm, doing, I'm going to be doing a series of studies coming up pretty much aim hit or miss or the bible after i'm done with mary tay moo's mass and lord willing i may do a series on the abominable and abomination of the bible because there's a lot more than sodomy read that verse and put that verse with your message for tithing I heard a man one time unsaved. The plate came to him as he was putting his money in the plate. Unsaved. Well, I'll just, I'll just put it on my taxes next year. Wow. I'm going to tell you right now, this is personal of Stiley Hayward. You don't have to take this. You, you can throw it in the garbage can. I think if you give money to the church and then claim your IRS on it, I believe you, you got your reward. And don't think it'll be credited in heaven. Now, that's Stiley Hayward that said that. The way of the wicked, oh, there he is again, is an abomination to the Lord. So any way that, that wicked man, what he does is an abomination. So is his sacrifice. So is he, he gave money to the church. Uh, he put a new roof on the church. Uh, he painted the church. Um, he fixed the van for the church. But he that loveth him that follows after righteousness. The opposite of wicked is righteousness. The opposite of wicked is the upright. You can be saved and be wicked. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. Who loves to be corrected? No one. Who loves the chastisement being corrected? No one. Again, I'm going to apply the verse to what I know. I go out every week and try to tell people how to be saved. I tell them if they continue in the way they're going, they're going to go to hell. Many, many do not listen. They hate it. You don't believe me? Ask the Daytona State. Ask the Daytona, the state of Daytona, the Daytona, the city of Daytona Police Department. Ask them if there are people that complain against a street preacher in their town. They hate it. And they're going to die in their sins and they're going to wake up in hell one day. And they were told on how not to get out of hell, how to get out of hell. Because hell and destruction are before the Lord. The, the God made hell. He made it for the devil and his angels. How much more the hearts of the children of men. Match that with the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. 
You can do all the good you want, but if you, you're sinning and rebelling against God and your parents, it don't get counted to you. You're wicked. And God knows your heart. And you can't hide from God what you can hide from your father. You can't hide from your father, God. As much as God sees hell and those that are in hell, he sees your heart. And he sees the evil and the good. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. Again, if you're in a public ministry, you understand what that is. Neither will he go unto the wise. That's the scorner. Now, we pray for those that scorn against us, but the Bible says he ain't going to show up to you. And if he does want to get right with, with you, he's going to find somebody else because he doesn't want to have to humble himself to come, come begging before you. Well, I have to, I'm sorry for all the things I've done. I'm, glad, I'm sorry for all the words. He, he's going to try to find. He's going to try to find the waterer, not the planter. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. Yeah, it makes your fat, your face ha happy. But the sorrow of the heart, the spirit's broken. Again, your heart condition. Leads to your health. And if you got a poor heart condition. You got poor health. <clears throat> Depression is, is deadly. Anxiety is deadly. The heart of him that has understanding. Seeketh knowledge. The mouth of fools. Feedeth on foolishness. That man that loves the Lord and reads his Bible and, and sits under Bible preaching and prays and does what the Bible tells him to do and tried to do what the Bible tells him. He's going to want more and more and more and more until the day he dies. The fool sits in front of the TV and learns more foolishness and fills with more foolishness upon more foolishness and more foolishness. And he won't open his Bible. I mean, how is your Bible reading center? You sure cannot sin against God and be happy reading your Bible. Can you? Now you rather put your foolish mind, your foolish ideas and foolishness of videos all the days that afflicted are evil all the pain all the sorrow all the discomfort evil it's not sin evil it's his consequences the consequences of being afflicted pain sorrow suffering that's what we did the study today on evil but he that has a merry heart, a opposite afflicted, has a continual feet. You're happy, you're worried. You're pleased. But if you're in agony and defeat, your days of medication, your days of seeking God, your days of just trying to get relief are evil. Better little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure. And we saw treasure, verse 6, in the house of the righteous is much treasure. Better is a little, better is, better is a little with fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therein. We'll look at verse 6. The house of the righteous is much treasure, but the revenues of the wicked is trouble the treasures we are seeking here in verse 16 are not the treasures of heavenly treasures they're the earthly worldly treasures that give you trouble along with the revenue and it's better to have a little fear of god and the consequences 
of angering God than to have the whole world filled with all kinds of precious stuff and junk. Because better is a dinner, the first time that word shows up, of herbs. Now, herbs is not a dinner. Herbs, you sit down, they bring you a plate, and you got a bunch of leaves and stems. That's what herbs is. It's better to have a meal with those, those leaves. Where love is, then the stalled ox, you're supposed to eat the ox. You're allowed to eat the ox. But then the stalled the ox is, is in a pen. And hatred there it with there with. That ox does not want to be penned. He'll kick and fight to get out of that pen. And the Bible says, better have a salad with love than steak with hate. Steak is good. But steak is not good when you're sitting amongst the enemy. And the enemy could be your loved ones. They, and they hate you. Now we're going to stop right there. We'll pick up verses 18 on later. Lord, tomorrow night. But where do you stand as a sinner? Where are you displeasing or pleasing the Lord? And remember the eyes of the Lord. Unlike Santa Claus, they're watching you. And God knows and God's keeping a record. And when you've sinned against God, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us un all right, unrighteous. And we got to stop doing it. Because even you get to the point that you confess and confess and confess, if you don't try to stop doing it, God's not going to take your confession. Then you become a hypocrite. And God is not pleased with you.